friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And yes, I'm still recovering from that cold you would have seen in a video that would be at least maybe about four weeks ago. Well, it's because it's all shot at the same time. These videos are out several weeks, but I'm doing great. I feel great. I just sound bad. So anyway, today I wanted to talk specifically about um, encouraging people to just dig in and try to try things. A lot of times people just don't have enough faith in the, themselves and they think that things are going to be a lot more complicated than they really are. And so I'll get a lot of people say, well, I'm too afraid to try this or that. You know, uh, can I buy some of your homemade salve or tincture or skin cream or, or whatever it is, whatever it is that I have. Now, just so you know, I have never ever sold any of my homemade medicinal products, be it uh, elderberry syrup, extract for pain and inflammation, extract to help sleep and to relax the muscles, the natural antibiotic extract I make. I don't sell any of that. So I get this request almost daily, but there, I have several reasons why I do not do that. But I know a lot of times people ask, cause it's like, well, I don't have this, or I don't have enough room to do this, or I, I just don't know how to do this, even though I have all kinds of instructional videos, how to do it. But I want to share with you that when I first got started in making my own products, I didn't follow anyone else's recipes. I just looked up herbs, I found out what was good for this, that, and the other thing, got a general idea how to do things, and then just did it. I didn't follow a specific recipe. I didn't worry about whether or not I did it exactly like this person over here or that person over there. I just did it. And I found what worked best for us just by doing that. So when I share my recipes on how, like, let's say, say for example, the one because uh, it was one of the first ones I made. I don't really make it a tincture because I don't use high proof alcohol, but you can. But anyway, I started off at the time I was trying to avoid using alcohol at all. So I started off just using homemade vinegar to extract the herbs. Mostly it was based on herbs I already grow, such as catmint, feverfew, echinacea, and um, then eventually when I started growing valerian, I added valerian root to it, which really took it over the top. And But a lot of it was through experimentation. And my favorite way to make an extract most of the time, and it's the reason I call it an extract, because extract will apply to any kind, whether it be an oxymil or a tincture, whatever, is a blend of raw honey and homemade wine because it's the cheapest, healthiest way to make them. Because I don't have to depend on a high proof alcohol that can be really expensive to buy. And we don't have a still, so we haven't started making that kind of stuff ourselves. But I can make homemade wine from my own apples, rhubarb, grapes, or blackberries. And I can use that to make an extract. And it works quite well for most things. But there's a lot of things that you can use just plain old vodka for. And it's so easy such as the cinchona bark extract I made a few years ago. I just put, I bought some cinchona bark, threw it in a jar, poured some vodka over the top of it, and then let it sit for a couple months. That's all it takes, it's not that hard, and it doesn't take up that much room. But also no, you do not have to make every single herb that you grow into an extract. I only started with one, and I only have three that I keep going on a regular basis. And then I have a, a maybe three others. I have Usnea, Turkey Tail, and the Cinchona Bark. And, um, oh, and I also have a multivitamin one that I make from my own homegrown greens, though I tend to forget I have that one. But uh, you don't have to tincture everything. So if uh, space is an issue, just start small. Make little bottles at a time. Besides, you're going to want to find out if it's even going to work for you. Before you start tincturing a whole a quart jar like I do now with a lot of it. And the same thing goes with your infused oils. It doesn't have to be that hard. Just find if there are, if you're already growing the herbs, dry them out when you're doing oils. You really need to dry those herbs first. Not like with tinctures, you can use dried or fresh. But with oils, you do need to dry them. Some people do heat it. I personally do not because I get concerned about the heat especially in oil, getting too hot and burning the herbs and ruining the benefits. So I just do a natural long infusion, which means I keep it in the warmest room of my house and then let it sit for 
two months. Two months to me is just a standard time. I And I don't even bother straining them until I need them. So they might sit in there for a year before I even get to it. So it's not that hard. It's just a matter of figuring out, well, where's a good place I can do that? Now, because I do sell my skin cream, I have quite a few quart jars of oil infusing. Now, this is just a regular skin cream I use on my face, and I don't claim it as being a medicinal thing, though. It has worked really well for healing up quite a few things, but it's just a skin cream for moisturizing. So I have quite a few quart jars of herbs infusing at all times, like seven or eight of them. And they're all hidden behind the TV screen in the other room. You can't even see them, but that's the warmest room of the house. And then I have a couple other jars of oils infusing of different kinds, like my healing salve and my joint and muscle rub. And so as far as space, all you got to do is be creative, just like with anything else, and you can figure out how to make space. But as far as ease, these things aren't hard. You put in your herbs, you pour the oil you're going to use over the top, stir it, pour some more oil, put a cap on it, and then put it somewhere where it's out of direct sun sunlight and stays at least warm. Not you, you don't want it hot, you know, for about two months. It's easy. And then, you know, after you kind of get going into this, if you want to watch other people's videos and learn more about specific recipes or the way other people do things, some people do apply heat when they're doing oils. Uh, everybody's going to have their own way of doing it. Just don't be afraid to try. You got to at least try. It is not hard. Trust me, it's not hard. And I know a lot of people are also there. They'll say, well, I'm just so busy. Well, so am I. I'm very, very busy. But you also got to know, and I get busier all the time. I mean, now I have three grandbabies I'm watching, still trying to do YouTube full time, still take care of my gardens and my chickens and the very many other chores I have around here. But little at a time, I learn something new, I add it. It's not that hard to do. You know, you don't have to do everything all at once. Like you don't have to learn how to sew and crochet and ferment and can and dehydrate and make a tincture and make an infused oil and make your own skin cream and make your own tooth powder and your own deodorant. You don't have to do all that at once. Start with one thing at a time. And once you realize, well, this is really simple. It only takes me about one to two minutes to throw this together then add something new. You know, same thing goes with cooking and baking from scratch. You know, learn how to make bread. Just learn how to make a loaf of bread. Don't feel like you got to learn everything else. Just learn one thing at a time and add to it. So most of us that have been doing a lot of self-sufficient kind of stuff, you know, the sewing, the crocheting, and much more, the gardening, these are things that we learned through the years a little at a time. I don't know that there's one person that has taken on everything all at once and just learned it. And you should never feel pushed into doing that. There's a lot of people kind of pressuring people to do this and do that and do that and do it now. And it can just feel so overwhelming. And I think that's the main reason why people are like, I just can't do it at all. Do it all. Can I just buy it? You know, soap, for instance. For years, I was buying handmade soap from other people locally until I was able to work up the courage as well as make the time to start doing it myself. And then once I got over the fear and I made my first batch, I realized how simple it was. And I've make, been making my own soap ever since. And I love it. And I have several videos out there on how to make soap. But don't feel like if you're still learning how to can or how to put up food and, you know, or how to dehydrate or how to sew or how to garden. Don't feel like you have to jump in and make soap right now too, just because I'm doing it or so-and-so is doing it too. Because like I said, you know, I, you know, I've been building on this, my skills since I was a child, actually, you know, learning how to cook and bake from scratch started at a very young age. And I built on that through the years. And then I taught myself how to crochet in my 30s. And I started learning how to sew in my teens. And all through the years, I've just added and built onto these. And most of this stuff has all been entirely self-taught. I didn't just suddenly one day wake up and know how to do all this stuff. So don't feel like you have to take it all on at once. Start with something simple. Again, infused oils, extracts, super easy. They only take a couple of minutes. If you already have the herbs on hand, and if you're not growing them, find what you can organic to buy. There's like Azure Standard 
is one of my favorite places now to get more and more things. And they have all kinds of organic herbs that you can purchase. And if you can't find them there, then you can look at Vitacost or, and I recommend the Frontier brand in that case. And if not on Vitacost, then maybe that same brand, a lot of times you can find more from Frontier on Amazon. And I do think Frontier Co-op has their own store you can go to if you don't like buying on Amazon. Just start looking around and you can buy a lot of these herbs yourself. Now, I do know the one herb that nobody's been able to find already dried up and for sale is nasturtium leaves and or even nasturtium flowers. And these are what I use for making my homemade antibiotic. But also know if you can't grow them yourself and you can't find them to buy, Look at other herbs because there's many other herbs out there that are great natural antivirals and antibiotics. And that would include things like thyme, rosemary, oregano. These are things a lot of people can already grow, but even if they can't, these are also things that people use to season their foods. So these are easy to find and start working on that. You don't have to do it exactly like I do, remember, or exactly like anyone else out there, whoever they are, no matter how skilled they are, no no matter how many credentials they, they have, you don't have to do it exactly like them. Just find what works best for you and start somewhere and you can do it. I have absolute faith that you can. And just don't take it all on at once, one thing at a time, build on it as you go and you'll realize you can. Okay, so I just want to encourage people. I, you know, again, I think people just start to feel overwhelmed with feeling like they got to take on every single project out there or every single video that Heidi throws out there. No, you don't. I'm just out here to teach you. Just take that video on that t particular topic and save it somewhere so that when you're ready to tackle making soap or making your own infused oil for a joint and muscle rub, then you can come back to that. It's that simple. Don't, and it just don't feel overwhelmed. Because if you get overwhelmed, you're just not going to do it at all. And I, I hate to see people just give up because they feel like they can't do it like everybody else is doing it. It's just like putting up food for long term. We all had to start somewhere. You know, you start small, you start with beans and rice, you build on that, and you just, you just build as you go and things get easier and pretty soon you don't, and you realize it didn't have to be stressful. You don't have to have five years of food put up all at once. Just start small and work up. Okay, I think I've said that part like a billion times already in this video, but it is important. It's really important that you look at it that way, just baby steps, and don't let yourself get stressed out or overwhelmed. All right, well, I hope you found this encouraging. That was the main point of this. And remember, you can do a search on my channel for anything specific by just putting... If you're on Rumble, you'd put Rain Country Homestead, all one word, and put the topic you're looking for. If you're looking for videos on YouTube, you'd put Rain Country as two separate words, and then your topic. So Rain Country Joint and Muscle Rub, or Rain Country Soap, and then you'll pull up all my soap making videos, which I don't have that many on Rumble, sorry. I have, the, I have one, I know for sure. I should start taking some more of my older videos and getting them over there if you wanna learn more about soap making, but um, I do still make it, I just don't sell it anymore. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, take care, and God bless.